In this episode of Mind Pump, the world's top ranked fitness, health, and entertainment podcast, we answered a lot of fitness and health questions that were asked by listeners and viewers just like you. Now, the first 45 minutes of this episode, though, is an intro portion. This is where we talk about current events. We mention studies. We have a lot of fun. After that, we answer the fitness questions. By the way, you can go to mindpumppodcast.com. Everything's time spent, so uh, time stamped, so you can fast forward to your favorite part. And it's spanned. But here's what, <laughs> what went down in today's episode. We started by talking about comic book heroes and villains. Those are good times. Mm. Then we talk about our childhood collections. Uh, Justin and I were big nerds. Uh, yeah. Adam was cool. Oh, Mr. Cool Guy. Then we talked about the uh, the what is it? The mountain lion that was chasing the the hiker video that went viral, and we talk about all these wild animal stories. Yeah, uh, I talk about Qantas, the Australian airline company that sold out on a flight to nowhere. Kind of crazy. <laughs> then we talked about a new sponsor that we have, or not new, but they're back. Caldera. They make some of the best skin products around. All natural. Adam loves it. If you're watching this on YouTube and you're wondering why Adam's skin looks so luscious and supple, like you want to kiss his cheek, it's because mm. of Caldera. Um, and because you listen to Mind Pump, you get 20% off all their products. Go check them out. Go to calderalab.com. That's C A L D E R A L A B. So the calderalab.com forward slash Mind Pump. Use the code Mind Pump, get 20% off. Moist and supple. Then I talk about Shaman predicting the election, super scientific results. <laughs> yeah. uh, Justin brought up some curses around the world. That was fun. Uh, we talk about Katrina ordering a brand new pillow from Pluto Pillow. Pluto Pillow is a company we work with that customizes a pillow. When's the last time you had a pillow that was customized for your body and your preferences? The it answer makes, is never. Never. It makes a huge difference. This company's blowing up because people are getting great results with their sleep by sleeping with a customizable pillow. And because you listen to Mind Pump, of course, you get the biggest discount uh, that you find anywhere. Naturally. Here's how you do it. Go to PlutoPillow.com. That's P-L-U-T-O Pillow.com forward slash Mind Pump. Use the code Mind Pump for 10% off. Then I brought up a 12-year-old kid who achieved nuclear fission Make me feel like an idiot. Yeah. Justin brought up his son, who's brilliant at playing video games. <laughs> um, and then we talked about Peloton. We still think it's a great buy. Go check them out. Then we got into answering the fitness and health questions. Here's the first one. This person wants to know when it's advantageous to change hand grip position for tricep exercises. The next question, this person says, look, uh, what do you tell someone who was told that they should only train with partial reps to save their joints? The third question, this person's got a big appetite, wants to know some strategies on how to prevent themselves from overeating. And the final question, this person wants to know what our thoughts are on chiropractic care. Um, Also, this month, we're running a huge promotion. Two of our most popular fitness programs, MAPS Anabolic, that's the foundational workout program that we have. It's great for building muscle, for building general strength. Really, really good for speeding up the metabolism. So if you're a female and you want to do a reverse diet, speed up your metabolism to make yourself be able to eat more and stay leaner, MAPS Anabolic, great program for that as well. So we have that program. And then we combined it with our No BS six-pack formula, which is a core training program designed to bring out definition and build the muscles of your core so they're visible at higher body fat percentages. Both those programs together normally retails at about $174. But right now, you get both of them for $59.95, one payment, lifetime access. Remember, all programs come with video demos, uh, exercises, sets, reps, basically everything you need to get fit to follow the programs. They also come with a 30-day guarantee. In other words, you can sign up, try them out for a full month. If you're not blown away with the results, return them for a full refund. Okay, so again, MAPS Anabolic, No BS Six Pack Formula, both of them combined for one payment under $60, just go to mapsoctober.com. That's maps, M-A-P-S, October.com. Do you guys like comic books when you were kids at all? Of course, dude. You did too? Yeah. Marvel or DC? Marvel. Yeah. Yeah, I was a big Marvel guy. You know, I read, um, it was uh, the Punisher War Journals were big mm. for me, and then also Wolverine. Uh, those are my two guys. It was all the angsty ones, you know, yeah, that, just, that didn't have like all the superpowers. I feel like DC had like some weird like superheroes and villains that didn't make like like the the villains on Batman. Mm-hmm. Some of them are like the Riddler. <laughs> <laughs> What's his? Yeah, yeah. riddle you this. I'm tell you yeah. riddles that you yeah. can't figure out. Ah. <laughs> 
It's like, get out of here. Yeah. My son is on, he, he likes to go on Reddit, which is uh, something I don't typically, I'm not really supportive of, but whatever. Anyway, there's this whole like page of crappy superpowers. And mm. so these, these guys or kids or whatever <laughs> write superpowers that would suck. Yeah. So like, for example, if you had the ability to run through walls 50% of the time. Fifty <laughs> percent, and you didn't know <laughs> exactly. Yeah, like, or hmm, the, let's try this: the power to shit in someone else's pants. That was another one that he had. Wow! <laughs> so, so, so we were making up these superpowers. That, we were going be, that would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just yeah. across the roof. <laughs> you just point and laugh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, I loved uh, I love reading some of those. But yeah, I was a huge uh, comic book fan. Oh, uh, the Incredible Hulk was my. Yeah, you know it's funny. Course. I remember I had a client that was like really into it, and he was trying. Trying to make the case for Aquaman for me for forever, We're saying he was like, "Yeah, I know, right?" And he's saying like he's like the most powerful. If you really like read, he's like, right. Yeah, because Did, he he like mind controls and like all this other stuff. Aquaman like, is the one. We're getting all nerdy here. Adam. I'm sorry. So, yeah. uh, Aquaman. Yeah, I was waiting for you to ask me about the comic book. Yeah, thing. No, he's he's quiet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Aquaman. No, I had friends growing <laughs> up. <laughs> I had a social life. Shut yeah. up, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had friends. Growing I tried up to balance both. Yeah. 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 No, no. Aquaman is the only is one of the only superheroes in DC that can rival Superman in terms of strength. Okay. A lot of people don't know that. Yeah, look, yeah, you didn't know that, did you? Fun fact right yeah. there. Breathe what, in so, the water. Hold on a second. You were a skinny kid, insecure yeah. kid. You didn't read comic books and fantasize being Hey, strong. I was still fucking cool. Just because I was all those things doesn't mean I wasn't oh cool. God, wow. <laughs> wow. No, did I you just, literally think that as a kid? Like, no, I'm cool. of course not, dude. That was not like that. That's what made me cool, right? Was the fact that I <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. Yeah. He, can't, he can't help himself. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's too cool. No, 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 no. Uh, I didn't know. I wasn't into Breathe stuff. Cool. I, the, the, you know, the kids that were playing the uh, Dungeons and Dragons and uh, at lunch at lunchtime and shit like that or were reading magazines. I was playing sports, dude. I played... I, I played a lot of stuff that I didn't even play, right? So like I, uh -huh. I, didn't, I didn't play baseball like oh. on a team. Like, oh, I, I see. But we would I would be playing baseball if so. We were at a park and my our I had buddies that were playing. We're I'm playing, so yeah. I played every every sport I could play. Did you ever col see? Did you ever collect anything like baseball cards? <clears throat> yeah, no. I, okay, yeah, so like I hobbies. Like. KG, yeah, I collected a lot of little things. All right, so you remember uh, micro machines? I collected yeah. micro machines when I was really little. That's kind of not that cool. What? Yeah. Micro machines were the shit when they, they were out. I was, dude. I used to make like elaborate garages and like things for them with Legos. That was so me. the nerdiest thing I could think of that I got into for micro machines. My God, what a flashback! Yeah, you guys a, remember the joke? Yeah, yeah. So on the nobody's gonna know this yeah. on our show because nobody. I'm sure most people are not it's old. But yeah, yeah, but on the commercial they used to be like, if it doesn't say micro machines, it's not the real thing. Remember yeah. that? That yeah, was yeah, their the slogan. Yeah. So remember the joke? Yeah, the, the, the dick joke. There's yes. Yeah. Do you have micro machines on your dick? Like, no, it's not yeah. the real thing. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. continue. Yeah. So that was uh, that, sorry, had to yeah. play old joke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was uh, that that I think the nerdiest thing that I collected was uh, pogs. I did that for. Oh, uh, you did Pog? Pogs? Yeah, for about two or three years, I was into that. Like the modern you? day Pokemon. Hold on a second. That's not your generation. That was my my brother's generation. He's was it? He's younger than me. How, how, how much younger is your brother? How old is he? Well, see, my brother is six years younger than me. Oh, that's a lot. So younger. yeah, so you're you're I'm only still, a couple years. Yeah, I was on what two three years older. So than you he were is. in high school doing with Pog? No, no, no. This was uh, sixth grade. I was doing it. Mm. Sixth, seventh, sixth and seventh by eighth for sure. By high school, I was not doing it. Even before high, it was about. Eighth grade, the summer of eighth grade is probably when I stopped doing it because at that time I had a girlfriend. I what was did you do with pogs? I don't remember. Pogs know, were the, they, so you used to, they were like these little, you know, cardboard little fucking things that you, you like, like tiddlywinks kind of like discs. Yeah, like discs. Yeah. And then you, and you had like a slammer, right? Oh, there they are. Yeah. And they, and they had, they had value to them, right? So there was more ones that were more rare. And then you, you would play somebody else and you stack them up. And I can't remember the exact rules, but I know that the stack can get higher and higher. And then each guy gets a turn to hit them and then flip them. And if they uh, flip them, you get to keep them. I remember that. So it was a big deal to to if you're into collecting them and if you had tons of them, like... Yeah, we. What I, a brilliant! If, so, so this was. A th I went on this kick for a couple of years. That's probably and, uh, if I could think of like the nerdiest like, thing that and I then collected. It was Beanie Babies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was the next follow up to that. Yeah, yeah. no, yeah. actually, I was into uh, Garbage Pail Kids. Yes. Okay, okay. I, I that was a, a that was those. real young though. That was yeah, that was a young, real yeah, young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gar do you think Garbage Pail Garbage Pail Kids would even make it today? Oh yes. Yeah, I feel like they're not politically I correct. I, bought, I know, but that's why they'd be popular. I bought a book. I bought one of their books that had like all the cards in it. Look they, at the picture. Look at these things. They're terrible. That's why they're awesome. Yeah, there's uh, no way. Doug, are you on images, Doug? So I believe that this stuff like this will make a resurgence. Don't you think this 
this stuff is oh, coming back. Oh, yeah, it needs to. Yeah, because yeah, you can't say like anything that's going to hurt anybody's feelings. Hold on. So. Go up, Doug. Look Let's at draw it. Go all the way to the top. Scroll down just a little bit so we can see the price. Look how much that one's valued. Garbage Pail Kids. $1,000 for that Schizo one card? Schizofran. What? Schizofran. So it's a it's a kid who's got schizophrenia. I, there's no way that they kid yeah, get away. So politically, yeah, a thousand dollars, dude. That's what yeah. makes it so expensive on right? eBay. Look at that. Tops Garbage Pail Kids first uh, edition, ninety five thousand dollars. Wow. What? There's no way. In I should have kept mine. What wow. an idiot! I had so many of Dang. them. Dang. Did Is you guys have any named after you? Was there like yeah, a garbage? yeah? Oh, there's one for all of us. There's, yeah. there's, I have like three. I posted that a long time ago. I tried to like find you guys, like add something, something Adam, something Sal. I, yeah, I forget what the you know they made fun of. There us was for. Adam Bomb, Adam, I think it Adam was. Bomb, and the yeah, kid's head exploded. Exploded. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know the one for Sal, Salvatore. What was it? Yeah, I don't know. It was something. I think it was Sally. Slippery Sal. <laughs> <laughs> Slimy Sal. S <laughs> Slithering Sal. No, no, he's gonna look it up. Doug, put yeah. Sal, put uh, Garbage yeah, Pail Kids, and then uh, the name. That's all you have to do is do Garbage Pail Kid, and then then the name. See, there's Adam Bomb, Adam. Uh, that was. Adam Bomb. A, that was a quite common one. I remember that one. Yeah. Where the kids' heads exploded. I had that one. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Put Salvatore or Sal. Let's see what this one is. Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember one being Sal. That would have been cool. No, there's Sal. No, you had one. It's right there. I mean, even if they Sal made it later. Sal Salad. <laughs> Sal yeah. Salad? That's super, super lame. <laughs> That's <Wow>. perfect. That's <laughs> so inventive. Sal Salad. It, it, it works for you. The number one thing kids said with my name was Salad. Yeah. That salad? was it. Yeah. Oh, hey, salad. Oh. Uh, that's, yeah. That's, <laughs> super original. That isn't funny. I used to collect. Uh, that's kind of sad, actually. So just, I guess, I guess you can kind of like, there's like a bit of a nerdiness scale going on here. Yeah, I see I that. did collect stamps. At one oh point. wow, yeah. dude! Yeah, yeah. come no, on, bro. I had stamps. That I, feeds right into your political uh, side of you. <laughs> yes, you it know? is. It's like, a, yeah, you collected stamps. Uh, you you ran for office in school. Yeah, I collect. I no, I didn't. I never no? did. No, dude, that was so. I what? Say, I hated that back then. It See, was, that surprises me. The kid would get on stage, and then they'd say something like, uh, mm -hmm. you know. I uh, you know uh, five minutes more recess if you elect me yeah. and then the so the kid kids would, in our that was a, I remember thinking to myself that was a like, cool thing to be in in our in our school it was cool to do that it wasn't like a, a dorky thing to be yeah, running for office oh we made fun of them oh yeah see no it was like all the all the, all the kids that were all the popular kids ran for office at our <laughs> school <laughs> Justin, <laughs> Justin, yeah. Justin, yeah. Justin was yeah. an anarchist yeah. <laughs> cool. I I was all over the place dude I I mean I hung out I I played Dungeons and Dragons you, you did know? and I played sports at the same time. Wow. Yeah. You, yeah. Were, you were a conflicted nerd. It, I was really, yeah, I didn't know where to live. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was just all over the place. Justin's the nerd who you want, to, if you're a nerd, you want to be friends with yeah, him. Yeah, stick up for the nerds. Because then he would uh, beat other people but, up. But uh, if yeah. you're like, if you're just like a pure dork, you know, you had no value, then I made fun yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, wow. yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah. No I'm value. Saying. You can have value. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You will be able to help you out with your math homework or That's something. That's right. Like that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, they reciprocate. Dude, there's only one time I ever did something to a kid that I, to this day, I regret so bad. Like, I feel so bad for doing it. And I know Justin's like, one? Yeah. I've got many. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, there was this kid who, he threw a basketball at my cousin's. I had a cousin that was younger than me. So he threw a basketball at my cousin's face and my cousin cried. My cousin was this chubby kid uh, oh. growing up and he got picked on. Oh, although man. now he's giant. He's That'll... like 6'5 and 320, something like that, whatever. Have you seen Red real quick? Oh, yeah. So my cousin cried and I remember I, I, I didn't see what happened. And afterwards, my cousin's, you know, his face was all red. And I'm like, what happened? Oh, so-and-so threw a basketball at my face. So I'm like, you know, I felt like I'm the justice guy, right? I'm going to go, I'm going to go pay him back. So I walked up to this kid as he was changing and I did, I watched too many Godfather movies, I swear to God, <laughs> and I hit him in the ribs hella hard and I, Ooh. and I said, Ooh, I said, ribs. this is for Dominic. Kush! And he fell on the floor <gasps> and he did one of these things where he went, I can't breathe. <laughs> I can't breathe. You took the wind out of Yeah. Him. And I'm like, oh shit. Oh no. <laughs> Yeah. And I felt hella bad, you know, for doing yeah. it. So if you're listening right now, I sorry know. about that. I didn't mean, <laughs> do, you, do you remember who the kid was? I don't remember his name, dude. I just remember he was like pulling his shirt off. So yeah. he's like super vulnerable, arms up in the air. Oh, yeah. And I just went behind him like, this is for Dominic. <laughs> Damn, you were a little bit of a bully guy. No, well, I, you know, I felt justified, right? But yeah, yeah, that yeah, was a bully. You always do, right? <laughs> <When> exactly. <you're laughs> like, yeah, I, I feel really bad. About wrong, it. dude. Did you guys see the video of the? Uh, 
uh, the, what, what is it called? The lion, the the mountain lion. Yes. Oh wow. my god. Yes. That was terrifying. I, that was oh. hella scary, dude. So the story no, behind ahead. it. Apparently, the guy was hiking, go and ahead. it was a mother mountain lion no. with her cub. Well, he ran across the. You saw the cub right at the beginning, right? Yes. Yeah. So you see the cub, and he's like, no. so that's what made him pull his vape camera out. Right? It was the video of the cub. Oh. And then all of a sudden, the mom comes out of the bushes, and you see him like, oh. Shit. You see a cub, you keep going quickly. Uh, yeah, you get the, hell, get the out. hell out. You know, so two things. First off, when you watch the video, you don't realize how well they blend in with their environment. Uh, when yeah. you watch the video, you kind of have to really pay attention to see the cub yeah, yeah. and the mom or whatever. But, the, dude, that is terrible. Uh, how much do mountain lions typically weigh? What are they, like 150 pounds? I'm sure, yeah. Maybe 190 or something, something like that? something, yeah. Th that'll shred you like you're- Yeah, but it's pure muscle, and it's all like, you know, insano like, strength that they have. It's a wild animal. Yeah. Yeah, we're weak sauce. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm not going to wrestle I it. was, like, unbelievably impressed with the guy's ability to record the whole thing. Yeah, like he recorded the whole thing as he's backpedaling in this. This I don't know. There's no way I would do that. No, no, no. Look at that female, sixty four to one hundred forty pounds. It's basically no bigger than a big dog. Yeah, but it would <clears throat> destroy. It'll tear your face off. Yeah, while you know, with one hand probably. Yeah. But the thing was, as he was backing up, because obviously the mom was trying to scare him away. Yeah. You know, I'm reading um, people's comments who are experienced. And look, I'm thinking to myself, like, what are you supposed to do? All I know is appear big. Right. You're supposed to stand tall and not turn around. Yeah, you could tell he was trying that. Yes. He was doing, like, bear sounds. In the, yeah. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't working so well. No, you just got to keep moving. <laughs> he was doing the scared growl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. But uh, but someone's like, oh, you should pick up a rock. But then I read underneath, and there was this guy who's, a, uh, who's like, a, uh, like a mountain ranger or whatever. And he says, if you do, do it quickly. Because if you crouch down, yeah. then they'll That's pounce. That's an opportunity. Because yes. they think you're doing the same thing, right? If you're p crouching down, he probably thinks you're going to pounce him, so he pounces you, you first. You just look smaller. Well, yeah. And yeah. You, yeah. You just look like you dominate you in that position. Oh, what would you do if you had your kids? And you're on that trail. Oh, you put them behind you and you just keep walking back. Dude. Yeah. Dude, that is well, so Well, that's crazy. what happened. Remember um, a, a while back, I think it's in Mountain View, that uh, one of them actually grabbed a kid that was kind of straggling behind everybody that was hiking and just snatched him. And then the dad had to go wrestle, you know, the kid loose. Yeah, that's the story I tell my kids. Make them speed up. Yeah. Yeah, hurry up. <laughs> hey, stop, stop complaining. I pull, I pull up the news report. Yeah, give you yeah. a trail mix. Yeah, you, you guys should probably speed up. Look at this. <laughs> this is what happens, kids. Hey, listen, kids, I, I lift weights, but I'm not very fast. So if, you get, if he grabs you, you're, you're I mean, totally dead. Real life teaches lessons, right? Oh, yeah. Shit. Didn't you say, Justin, that you're seeing more like wildlife and stuff because of the fires and yeah, stuff? Yeah, that's what I, I, I mean, and that's my guess. Um, they're it, coming down. They're coming down. It, there's a lot more, and there's. It, it's interesting because, like, I mean, there's always, like, certain noises outside. I'm like, oh, I wonder what animal that is. Like, when I'm outside at night, especially taking the dogs out for the last time to go potty and all that. And uh, there's been there's been these weird noises, like uh, weird birds that are coming through. There's been, like, wrestling in the bushes. And I'm just like, man, I should probably do this quickly, you know? What do you, what wildlife do you see by your house? What's, what's common? Uh, there's, like, wooded owls. There's, uh, I mean, there's lots of turkey. Uh, yeah. There's deer, raccoons, probably deer. There's mountain lions. Have you seen a mountain lion? I have. You have? Yeah, it was on my neighbor's camera. Uh, f it, it walked through his uh, backyard. Dude. Yeah. So, and, and that was one actually that that Courtney <laughs> came back uh, late and, and was walking, and she said she had felt like a presence, you know, and was just like kind of scared and like jetted into the house. And that was like the the next day we saw that it was a mountain lion on oh, our wow. neighbor's camera. Yeah. So I went down a rabbit hole when I saw that video of the mountain lion. There was one video where this kid was hiking with his dad, and a freaking grizzly bear is up on the top of the hill oh my and God. just starts walking down towards the kid and the dad's like okay walk slowly just keep coming towards me walk slowly and there's a freaking grizzly bear like literally coming closer and that closer. to me would be wow. like one of the because at least even with a cat right so it's a 140 pound cat i feel like i've got a chance of survival with that a yeah. fucking grizzly bear you got no chance nothing yeah, no, no chance no nothing no. I don't, that that is to me way scary like you said you bring up your like if it was me and my kids and then that that mountain lion i would probably charge it just and hope to God that I can fucking get somewhere with it, you know uh, what I'm saying? And let my kids get free and run somewhere and they live and survive. And hopefully I can fight it free. Dude. But a bear, you don't do that. There's no, no way I'm charging a bear. Thinking just tell, you, just, you just talk to your kid real quick. Yeah. Listen, buddy, close your eyes. We're about to, <laughs> yeah. we're about to go to sleep. Right. Yeah, there's, I mean, there ain't nothing. They're so strong. Uh, grizzly bears can break the back of a moose, I read. Which, I, if you guys ever seen a moose. Uh, what? Yeah. A moose is massive. Mo 
it's over a ton, right? Yeah, like massive. Weight. That's how strong, uh, you know, bears are. Yeah, I don't know. So that sent me down a rabbit hole of like animals uh, in the wild and then animals escaping zoos. And then I read some news articles about recently there was a, some escapes. Uh, there was a beaver that escaped in New Mexico. <laughs> That's nothing. Oh for, no! Yeah. Escape with the beaver. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but how? But how weird would that be, right? You're walking yeah. around San Jose and you see a beaver. It's like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> and then an emu in in Florida apparently escaped. Wait, what do those look what, like? Yeah, Emus. what's an emu? Emu looks like a uh, alpaca. Is it? No. Pull that up. Guys. Emu. Emu's like an ostrich. It's an ostrich. Bird? Yeah, that's what I was right. gonna say. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, it's like a big uh, a big ostrich. Which you know, it'd be weird if you saw that kind of stuff. That one show on Netflix, The Tiger King. I had no idea there were that many lions and tigers that people owned yeah. i know that was an enlightening uh to, to see how many people actually were you know storing these exotic animals all over the world like or all over uh, america it was like wow i didn't even know they were here yeah and I, I guess there's like big snakes that people will, will encounter in florida and a lot of them are people had them as pets they get too big and then they let them go yeah <laughs> <laughs> They'll just drive to the Everglades or whatever. Yeah, wasn't it like boa constrictors or like, yeah, like pythons or something like took over the landscape? Yeah, they, they got free. In fact, there was two, because again, I was on this rabbit hole of reading yeah, these articles. I've never seen that. Two guys in Florida found the biggest python ever uh, recorded in Florida, uh, 18 uh, feet, Whoa. nine inches long. Oh my was there a human in there? No. Oh, God. Dude. No, I hope that's not. That's pretty big. Yeah, that'd be. Yeah, it was, <laughs> that, it was eating. It was that, feasting. That would be not so good. No. Anyway, um, uh, more interesting news. Did you guys know? So there's a, uh, I think it's an Australian airline company. Let me read. Uh, let me look at the name here. K- kind of interesting. So this Australian uh, um, airline company, Qantas. Have you guys heard of Qantas heard before? Of Qantas. Uh-huh. Yes, yeah. definitely. Have you seen Rain Man? No. Oh. Never had a crash. Oh, right. Definitely. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> that's yeah, right, yeah. Doug. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, Qantas came out with a flight. Uh, like this, this offer to try and generate revenue, and it was a flight to nowhere. Okay, what? yes. So here's what happens. What? And remember, because of lockdown and stuff, people are like, they need something to do. I guess you get on the plane. You don't know where you're going. The plane takes off. Oh, it's worse than that. Plane takes off, and then seven hours later, lands back where it was. Where it the came same from. place. So it just you just a, just the thing of getting in the plane and going and coming back. It just does a loop. What? And then it comes back. <laughs> people paid for that. Sold out. What? <laughs> yeah, dude, they sold out. Now, okay, they did they know? We really have gone. Mental. Did they know that was going to happen? No, yeah, it wasn't a surprise. <laughs> By so, a surprise plane ticket. That's what I get thought. On the plane. Just I mean, to that's come more. Back? That's more interesting to me. Like, if you go, hey, listen, we're we're going to take you somewhere seven hours away. We're not going to tell you where. I'm like, okay, this sounds kind of interesting. It was it's called, a nice little hustle for pack? the airline. You know, yeah, we're just going to run some laps. No, it was called the Great Southern Land Scenic Flight. So it says reignite the joy of flying and take off. On a great southern land, scenic flight, sightsee iconic destinations across Australia from the sky, where there are no border restrictions. It's sold out. Yeah. You can see it for like a second. So you literally fly around and yeah. then come back. And people bought. People I, like flying that much. Flying sucks. Yeah, it's not a great experience. It's a big, big old fart. Box. I do remember as a kid though wanting to fly. <laughs> what? what a <laughs> fart is, box? It's a big huge fart box. Think about it. <laughs> everybody in there just letting them go. You're the one that's doing <laughs> it. I'm just yeah. saying everybody does it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come on, guys. Just the yeah. just the crushes the eye. Yeah, <laughs> he's just like it's, it's worse he, than an elevator. As soon as he dude. catches like a small whiff, he's like, oh yeah, someone else uh, is doing it. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. that's what's happening right now. Check this out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. Every time we go on a flight, oh, he's. Eating that big bag of peanuts. Dude, Here we go. It's just like a big ass Pringle can in the air, dude. Everybody's letting them go. Oh, but they sold out, though. <clears throat> That's stupid. Well, you that got, is yeah. stupid. You know what, though? I don't get it. You got to you got to give it to them for the well. Yeah, brilliant, engineer- on, brilliant on their part. Totally. I mean, helicopter rides. At least you're like, you know, it's an experience, and you're seeing things up close. Like that, just to me, seems like you're. Uh, it's lame. Well, well, not only that, but a plane is cramped, dude. It, like, it, yeah, but you know what? Consider the context of what's going on. Australia, in particular, has some of the harshest lockdown uh, rules. Oh, they do. Uh, that's right. Yes. So I'm sure people so it's like, like a little moment of freedom. Yeah, they're like, I get the fuck out of here. Dude. Yeah. And they're like, oh, buy a plane ticket and fly around, wow. and come back for seven hours. It must be bad if that it sounds exciting. <laughs> yeah, I'm down. Yeah. You know wow. what I mean? 
Let's wow. do this. Yeah, like uh, the, the drive-ins uh, in San Jose. I know they opened up before other movie oh, theaters. Oh, did you go? You were talking about going. Uh, I was going to, but apparently they get packed because people are just, they just want to get out. No, yeah. The, you know? Yeah, I totally, I can totally see that. Like, I was actually looking for that. Santa Cruz had just finally opened there. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at going to see one And there's of those. no good movies to watch. Nothing. Oh. That's so the problem. They, they've delayed it all till next year. Like, everything. Are they really? Yeah, because the, the, the one I was looking forward to the most was Top Gun's Maverick and all that. Oh, and then oh. they push it to next year uh you know lots of the big ones and dune and all that they've moved to next year so it's like i'm excited that's what, that's what we're making for max for halloween is uh he's gonna be maverick from top gun is he really <laughs> that's yeah, awesome yeah, oh, yeah that's so cute i know dude. i know yeah. that's why i'm bummed they didn't come now out. are you gonna so I, I did this with my kids up until <clears throat> oh god i, I would i want to say until my son was like maybe nine um and so my daughter would have been uh five or whatever we would dress up uh all together so like one year, my my son was Batman and I was Robin. It's mm -hmm. kind of funny because I'm bigger than him, right? Yeah. Uh, we did Mario, Luigi. We did you know the whole thing. Are you doing that? Yeah. No, I'm gonna. I'll get dressed up also. I'm not yeah. a big fan of that. Are but you I'm Goose doing that. or it's whatever? More, I, I don't know what Katrina. I, we she's, did that with Star Wars. Yeah, she's like in charge of that. That's I'm like my deal is I'll do it right. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, I'll dress up if that's the case. But you got to put it all together. So it's been. I think that's just, she's got me coming. She's got goose, and then I'll shave everything off with my mustache, and then I'll have, we'll have the full jumpers uh, and everything. So, yeah, well, that'll be for what Halloween. What about the dogs? You put the dogs in? Hell no. Dude. Dress those, up your dog. No. Is it, is those it, guys are too much Tom right Cap, now. Tomcat, yeah. whatever. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's a fighter jet. Dude, yeah. Hey, can I take a quick commercial break? I want to I want to tell you guys something I'm so excited about. So we had a we had a partner uh, last year that um, we we talked about quite a bit, uh, Caldera. Oh right. And um, I've I loved. I love their stuff so much that I never stopped using it. And when COVID hit, they were one of the companies that weren't sure how they were going to survive during that time. And so they they cut back on a lot of spend on advertising. And I was so bummed. I was constantly calling. Their representative is a friend that I know, Ari, and I'd be talking to him like, dude, when are you going to get Caldera back? Because I haven't stopped using this product. That's the one you always put on your, yes, your, your dude, head and face. I, or... it's, it's my go-to now like for my psoriasis and then and then my face. So both... I like I like using the the serum on my face and then I like using it on my on my dry skin spots with my psoriasis and it helps definitely keep it down and then I'm not using all of these chemicals right so like if I go to the uh, the uh, dermatologist they give you like the the creams with steroids in it and the or I can do the not shots not even the good ones either yeah and yeah. so yeah right <laughs> not, not the good stuff at all and so I'm always trying to minimize how much I use it because it like. That stuff like bleaches your skin and it like kills it it kills everything. So it's like it's not ideal long term. It's no. like a last case scenario you want to use that. So I'd much prefer using something that's more natural if I can find something that helps tamp it down a little bit. But nothing works like that. I mean, it, that's so I've, I'm still always forced to go back to the creams. But once we got introduced to that 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 Caldera serum and I started using that, and it's all natural. Yes, I remember mm -hmm. you showed me the bottle, and I use it a couple times. I have per, my skin is pretty. You know, I don't typically put anything on my skin. Yeah, but if I do, I can tell when. For the most part, I'll break out or whatever. And uh, with their stuff, it's I could definitely all... use it. I am like like gator skin. Yeah, yeah, is, like like you, crocodile skin. Yeah, you need to pour some on your. Yeah, skin. I just haven't like <laughs> yeah. I haven't made that a priority ever. Yeah. So you know maybe I'll experiment. Every time like, you extend your elbow, it's like you, you yeah, empty out a box whoosh. of triscuits on the. Oh, <laughs> gross, dude! Yeah. That's yeah. so gross. <laughs> they call it antiquing. You know, yeah. oh, <laughs> gross. Just, like throw dust. Well, on I'm that. just I'm pumped that we got them back. So it's really exciting. It's exciting to finally get them back. It was one of those brands that. Uh, um, I liked it since day one we had it. I never stopped using it. You just stopped hearing me talk about it. I see you put it on your face, your head, and then on your uh, on your shins. Yeah, yeah. Is that the most? Yeah, it? those are the main areas of my where my. It's psoriasis. really about what we don't see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Stop rubbing it yeah, so much. Yeah, right? yeah. So I no, I mean it, it's this like little. Vi what I like too is it, it comes in this like little vial, and you know at first like you look at the price and you're like, oh shit, that's expensive, but it lasts a really long time because it only takes. It's like an oil, right? So you only you you do like one droplet on it, and it, I can spread it all over my skin. So it lasts a lot longer than what it looks at first mm -hmm. glance. You're like, damn, that's a little bottle. That's really expensive, but it goes along. And, long and ways. I'm, I mean, this is true too. I'm not just saying this because you're talking about a sponsor. Your skin is nice. No, it looks right, healthy. Right? Yeah. yeah, it looks very. Um, Thank you. What's the word I want to use? Shiny, young, healthy, young, young, youthful. Good word. Yeah, 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 youthful skin. Yeah, yeah, plump. Yeah. Yeah. Plump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The word supple. Yeah. Uh, supple. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Gosh, damn. I don't use that word. Doug with the word. Weird word. Yeah. Hey, so um, I got some interesting predictions for the election. 
Oh, okay. Up. <laughs> <He's> just... <laughs> so, so you know, the, they have polls that go out and they say, oh, 50% chance, 40% chance or whatever. Yeah. Um, I think we have one that might be the most accurate. Mm. Is, is this a Sostradamus mo- uh, moment? No, this is a good one. It's a good okay. prediction. Okay, okay. So they did some, they had some uh, ayahuasca shaman. What? <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Take some ayahuasca and then dump out the leaves and then do their Oh, this is going to be really accurate. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, science. Yeah, I mean, Mother Aya, you know, yes. she's, she's just tells you everything. Direct us all. That's happen. <laughs> so, they, so apparently there, was, there were four shaman that came out with their predictions, and two of them predicted Biden would win. The other two predicted Trump. So, <laughs> 50, 50. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I have no idea. Oh, man. But this was a thing. They actually did this. They actually had shaman. Come on, shaman. Yeah, oh, try to predict. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to believe. I see all polls on each side that are just way, way Maybe crazy. Maybe that is what's going to happen, and then we just, we're stuck. Yeah. You know, like in this weird purgatory yeah, for the so, next year. <laughs> yeah, they're like, oh, civil war. That's what's going to happen. Oh, yeah. What's gonna, what, yeah. Was the, what was the stat, though, Sal? Like if a president is going for his second term and he gets approved by the the, oh, his approval rating? Yeah. Approval ratings above like 40-something percent are rare. And he, there was a poll that had Trump, and the, the, the it's not approval rating, sorry. The question is, um, are you better off than you were four years ago? And I think it was like 50-something percent said yes, which is a high number for that particular poll. So that was, I mean, for the Trump campaign, that was very good news. Mm. But every other poll has Biden in like... Single or double digit leads. So, but here's the problem the, the polls were notoriously off the last time, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's a weird, weird thing. Now, is that just the last the last two elections, or was, has it been that way for a long time? Have they been that far off? You or know, the, the Hillary thing was that the biggest surprise we've ever well, seen? Well, so what happened, and this has only happened in, I think it's only happened four or five times. So, four or five elections in American history where the popular vote didn't match the electoral college vote. So the polls accurately predicted the popular vote, but they did not predict the electoral college vote, which is what elects uh, a president. It's the electoral college that elects a president. So, um, so that's the argument. The argument is no, the polls were accurate, but the uh, because the popular vote did go to, to Hillary, but Trump won because he got the electoral college vote. I don't know. I have no idea. I feel like it's like uh, Rotten Tomatoes versus the critics, you know, or that's that's the you get the voting of the the people that are watching the show versus oh, right. the actual critics of the show. How they're always so far Pretty off, pretty far yeah. from each other. Yeah. yeah. What I don't yeah. like is that both sides are doing this whole like voter fraud thing that they're talking about. I don't like that because yeah. it's, it just puts mistrust in you know the the general public's but eyes. But don't you guys just, thing don't do. you feel like though that this is one of those elections that no matter what happens, uh, the other side is going yeah, to somebody's going to the other side is going to claim that. It's been yeah. like that for a long time. Uh, people, I don't know, you know, people remember Bush and Gore. Bush and Gore. Yeah, and the that Supreme Court one. had to decide that one. Um, was that uh, in Florida? That was the right? Florida like, yeah, 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 right. Yeah, and I, you know, I, here's why you should never, unless you want to destroy the whole thing. Which, okay, maybe someone does want to do that, but you don't want to sow distrust in the process of electing, um, you know, officials, regardless if you're on the right or the left, because. That once people lose trust, then why are we even having elections? Then it becomes, yeah, you have someone who's declared a winner, but nobody believes it. Ooh, that's not a good position to be in. We do, no. we don't, you definitely don't want to do that. So I don't like that they're both doing that. Politics is getting real ugly. No, I can't you know stand I mean? that. Yeah. Uh, have, do you guys believe in curses? Yep. I'm just going to throw that out there. <laughs> I'm just, nice, I'm asking. Very nice transition yeah, right there. Thank you. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. You know what? Probably the ayahuasca talk would have yeah. been a better time to transition. I, I, you know, I could have I thrown it in group. there. <laughs> that might have been more smooth. Uh, but, yeah, because no, we talked before about, like, our belief system on, like, ghosts and all that. You guys yeah. gave me a hard time. Um, so this lady uh, basically was in Pompeii. She had stolen some artifacts, like, 15 years ago or whatever, but... Like brings them back to the site and claims that she's had 15 years of like the worst luck she's ever had in her entire like <laughs> like every bad thing that could happen happened to her mm. and so she just attributes it to her taking these artifacts and like there's curse uh, attached to it. Well, so- I do. You know what I do believe is what we talk a lot about it, like the power of the brain and thought, like. <laughs> we yeah, if you think you're cursed, yeah, guilt. guilt. Uh, yeah, I have one hundred percent, dude. I think that that's mindset is. We talk about how powerful mindset is. You dude. know, it's funny. You some can of the, create it the, to yourself. Easily, the most superstitious people in uh, America, at least, are athletes. 
I, 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 that's I could totally say that. Well, yeah, because everything is ritualistic. You know, at, the way you at, do everything. Oh, they're notoriously uh, superstitious about yeah. wearing the right socks, putting on the right shoe at the right time, and oh, I got to make sure I touch the thing before they I walk talk out about the field. that though in like yeah. Rise of Superman, the the importance of that, right? So you're trying to create flow, like mm -hmm. you, yeah. and part of creating that is getting in this rhythm of whatever it is you're doing. That's why you see yep. like baseball players, you know, every time when he gets up to bat, he, he taps the yeah, taps his foot, foot he, he hits he his shakes hat. his hips, and then. Yeah. yeah, it's all to get in his rhythm before he gets in there. Even though we've we've coined it as superstition, right? That's how we've coined it, and we say that oh, the baseball players or athletes are so superstitious. But I really think it's more like a rhythm, the thing. value because it puts you in. Yes, like it's like a it's like a ritual that gets you into that space. Right, right. So although I've, I'm not, I've never really been into athletics. Um, I do have certain ritualistic things that my wife uh, very happily points out to me uh, when I work out. <laughs> Ah. So like when I do uh, a heavy squat, I do this thing with my jaw where I stretch my jaw out and I make the space. Yeah. 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 Uh, when I do that. when I deadlift, <laughs> I do this thing with my back before I lift. And so she likes to point that out. Like, yeah. Why do you make that face before you squat? I'm like, I do? Oh, that's weird. I used to do what they called like chicken winging before I'd bench. You know, I'd just do this like How? real quick like this. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's what I did before I knew what I was doing. Yeah, that's yeah. hilarious. Yeah, and people made fun of me. Dude, my, it worked. my dad uh, and just old Sicilians in general are so superstitious. It's it's hilarious how super – my dad, if you put your shoes down, so if you take your shoes off and you put your shoes down and the shoes aren't together, if one of them's backwards or the right is on the wrong side, he has to go fix them. Oh, really? Yeah, because – That's weird because I do that, but not because I have a superstition. It's oh, just – it's weird. It bugs me. Oh, he, liter yeah. he literally yeah. is like, oh, you'll hurt your ankle. So I have to fix your, <laughs> <laughs> even though they're not on your feet. Yes, he's got to <laughs> he He's got to straighten them out, you know. And uh, what else does he do? That's oh. interesting because I do the same thing, but I've never, yeah. never figured out why it bothers me. Yeah, yeah. If I we have shoes all the time, of course, in my house, right? So that I, if they're in, like we have them by our stairwell, we have them outside on the deck. And if I walk past them and they're all like that, disheveled, I'll just I'll stack them back together all nice and neat. Oh, and then there's other. this thing like if you have a bad dream, <clears throat> you have to tell I think three people, otherwise it'll it'll become true. Oh, That's what? one. If you're pregnant, it's oh, like chain mail, bro. <laughs> I hate those things, dude. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, why did I open this yeah. stupid stuff? Yeah, and then you think about it all day. Yeah, and you're like, should I have responded? Damn should it. I have sent it? Oh, uh, this the, they Send have it to my brother. All these interesting superstitions <laughs> around pregnancy. So Sicilians will say if a woman has a craving, and I feel like they made, I feel like pregnant women came up with this. It's like a scam. Right? <laughs> so here's the, here's the superstition. It's very strong. My family's real big about this. If a pregnant woman has a craving, you must give her that food. Oh, wow. That's funny. You have to give her the food she has a craving for. So it could be anything. She's like, I want a hot dog from New York. You got to fly your ass over to New York. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Like one time, literally, my uncle in- Sounds in, expensive. My uncle who lived in, and, his, and my aunt who lived in Calabria, so that's the southern part of Italy, before you get to Sicily, right? She had a craving for Sicilian bread. He literally- Drove, got on the ferry, went all the way to Messina in Sicily to get the bread. How far is that, bro? It's like a four-hour, five-hour commute That's to get crazy. yeah some bread because she craved it. If you don't give her the food that she craves, your baby will be born with a birthmark that looks like the food that she didn't get. What? Yes, what? that's what they say, wow. dude. Wow. Really? Yes. I mean, I guess you're motivated at that point yeah. to believe that. So yeah. it's funny because we'll be like at a family function or whatever. <laughs> you end up and with this big Gorbachev yeah. you know, thing on your head. <laughs> and my, like, I would have beat this life right now, bro. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> See what happened? You didn't give me the Kool-Aid. Now I got the... My, so we'll be at a family function and Jessica will say something about a craving and I'll tell her, like, do not say that too loud. Don't say it loud. Yeah, because my grandma will be like, what? what? What do you crave? <laughs> okay, we need to get it. We need yeah. to make it happen right now. Yeah. Oh my god, dude! Oh man, we're have you know, pizza that's, and ice I cream. I didn't know that. That's interesting. Isn't that weird? That yeah. is yeah. weird. Yeah. Anyway, hilarious, <laughs> yeah. dude. So, how are you guys enjoying uh, your pillow, your Pluto pillow? The uh, Katrina just ordered hers last night. She didn't. She hadn't gone through. The what did she think of the process? So is she like mid range, like a little higher. So low, I, didn't flat? I didn't. I didn't watch. Which okay. in fact, I just. I just. Cause she asked me too. I'm like, I don't want to tell you how you should order your pillow. Order your own damn pillow, and then we'll just talk about it after you get it. But she'd been trying to jack mine all the time. And so I kept telling her, order the damn fucking pillow from Pluto, dude. I've got gangster there for a second. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I <laughs> She'd be trying to jack it. She'd be trying to jack my <laughs> stuff, she, man. She'd try to jack my pillow, yeah. man. Get your own Pluto pillow, yeah, right? Yeah. So, yeah, she just ordered last night. And she was like, God, I didn't realize, like, how intense the questions are. They give you lots of questions, like, to really drill it down. I said, yeah, no, that's the idea. So 
you have like the most ideal pillow for you. So, and I have a feeling like, you know, and I'm, I'm waiting for someone to give me this response back. Like, you know, I, until Pluto pillow, I would never done something like this for a pillow. So even like, I, I want to order again and there's like some minor adjustments I want to make. And I think that's kind of part of the process is like, it's like when you get a haircut for the first, even though Sal doesn't experience this, when you get a haircut for the first time from <laughs> yeah. like a really good stylist, it's I like it still though. takes two or three times mm. before she gets it down and then you have this like great look, right? So it's the same mm. thing with the pillow, I yeah. think, like till you like hone in on the perfect pillow, right? So yeah. we'll see what hers turns out, see if it's like mine or totally the different. The rest are just decorative pillows now. Yeah. Yes. That's you know, happening. like, yeah, I, there's always that one pillow that's your favorite and then that like, you know, you have you revolve everything around that. Yeah. So that's what mine's turned into. Do you guys have decorative soaps? Decorative soaps, we do not. Yeah, my my that's mom's a, got decorative that's soaps. That's a new thing. She, she has soaps that you can't wash your hands with. If you do, you'll get what? Hit. Yeah, you'll like get, they just that's sit on a the functional couch. thing. It's just you got in the bathroom. There are the soaps that look nice, and yeah. then next to it is the actual soap that you use. I always use soap. the decorative towels. Yeah, which I'm guilty of that. I, I, I get, get in trouble for for that yeah. all the time. Could you come out and be this like, "This is for Halloween." I'm drying yeah. myself off with it. There was no Whatever. towels in the cabinet. I had to use it. Dude, like, it's like function. Come on, guys. Yeah. It's, it's the whole function of it. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's crazy stuff. Do you, oh, you, want, you just want to hear something crazy? Mm. So just to make you feel, sometimes I read things that just make me realize just how not, how not smart I am. Mm. Oh. So there's this uh, kid. Uh, he just turned 13 years old or right before he turned. Yeah, right before he turned 13. A Tennessee boy is being honored by the Guinness Book of World Records. You know what he did? Mm. So remember, he, he literally hours before he turned 13 – he was able to achieve nuclear fission. What? Wait, at in, 13? It, 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 before he turned 13, he was able to achieve nuclear fission. So he used, this is what he wrote. This was his quote. I've been able to use electricity to accelerate two atoms of deuterium together. So they fuse into an atom of helium-3 and also release a neutron, which can be used to heat up water and turn a steam, a steam engine, which in turn produces Electricity. What? This the kid hell? is, yeah, isn't that He's amazing? Like a, like a super genius. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I De love reading stuff like that. Deuterium man. sounds made up, though, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's that sounds like, too. yeah, it sounds like one of those Avatar ones. You know? <laughs> if, you're, a, if you have a mind like that, though, at like 12 years old, how tortured are you? You have to be tortured inside, right? <sighs> I ha you have to think, in order to yeah. reach that level of intelligence, you got to think that that brain is running at, at 100 miles like, an hour. How do you have conversations with people? No, yeah, you don't. It's tough. I don't think you're, how would you you're probably in a room, you're probably in a room reading all the time because that's all you enjoyed. It's the only thing that will probably scratch that itch for you. Yeah. Otherwise, it, you're probably being tortured by your own thoughts. I would think that. The biggest challenge yeah. I could imagine with being that smart as a kid, it would be relating to kids your own age. Right. Yeah. Like imagine he's 12 and he's sitting around with his friends and they're doing, you know, like <laughs> like they're playing with pogs or whatever, yeah. you know, yeah. and he's like, oh, you guys, that's cool. Yeah. So I, uh, you guys know what nuclear fission is? Yeah. yeah. We got to get them the right mentors. I just know that much. You know, yeah, you, you got to make sure he doesn't go down, you know, the crazy evil path. It's funny because you think that these super brilliant kids would become extremely successful in the future. Oftentimes they don't. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes they just they have a normal job and they just have hobbies where they do really hard, difficult things yeah. because they just love the, the challenge and the learning. But that's crazy, right? That's at that insane. age, yeah. <laughs> How he figures all that out. It's so brilliant. I know. It's, I, I I love reading stuff like that about uh, about kids. You ever watch those uh, like uh, music geniuses when they're like five mm -hmm. or six playing the yeah. the violin or the piano or whatever? Yeah, I love that. I love, and that's just the thing. Like it, we see greatness, and it, it it does something to you. You know, you're like, wow, that's mm -hmm. possible. It's it's just a, it's it's awe inspiring. Have you guys ever met a kid where you knew that they were brilliant in some aspect? You guys ever seen a kid well, like that? Well, yeah, no, life? you can see some kids. I was just, just telling you guys. Athletically, about, I have. <clears throat> I was just yeah. telling you guys about um, uh, Katrina's best friend, her her um, her son, who is, how old is he? He is only, I want to say he's six or seven. And he is, like, his his ability to do math, like, he, th we, they were firing, like, multiple multiplication. And I it took me longer to get the answer than it took him to get the answer. Mm. Like, he was just so fast. And I'm talking like, you know, 12 times 17. And like the kid would whip it out really, really quick. And his dad had taught him all these methods of shortcuts on mm. on multiplication. And he's like fucking seven, dude. He's like so young. They don't, awesome. even, they don't even teach you that until you get to like fourth grade. So he's way ahead of like all the kids in his class. So you can tell. I mean, if he's there right now, who knows where the hell he's going to be in four the or five. Potential, yeah. Yeah, there's a, it's a missed opportunity sometimes with kids and uh, like the way education is organized because what you have is you have a combination of a brain 
that is highly moldable, way more than when you're an adult. I mean, this is why when you learn a new language as a kid, you don't get an accent like you do when you're an adult. It's just this, it's so plastic, right? So it's extremely moldable and plastic. And if you can combine that with obsessive uh, passion that a lot of kids have, this is not, it's not uncommon oh, yeah. <laughs> for kids to not be obsessively passionate about something. Sometimes it looks like they're into video games or they're into baseball cards mm-hmm. or whatever. But if you could like kind of work with that a little bit and get them to to direct that passion towards something that they could learn, mm-hmm. children will blow your mind with yeah. what they can accomplish. You never know what the passion is. is, is speaking of that too, like, so I've, I've been trying to kind of figure out with both my boys and whatnot, and I hadn't seen anything from my youngest until just uh, recently. He played Mario 3 at his friend's house. He came, comes back. He starts talking to me all about it, how much he loved it, all this stuff. And I was like, we had this like full conversation about every level because I remember it vividly. That was like my favorite game growing up and everything. And I remember that we had this product from a long time ago. I brought this up on the podcast called Bloxels, uh, where you basically put like pixels together to create characters. You can create your own video game. Oh. And so like we started to kind of mess around with that again. And he's gone crazy with it, dude. He's he went like and, and create all these characters and he's got this whole thing. And I've, I've never seen him so like into something. Isn't, isn't that, that, great? G- isn't that yeah. that game Roblox or what's it called? It, no, it's not that, but it's, um, this is actually a way you, you can make your own within, uh, their, their, they have the software where basically you take pictures of your characters and stuff, and then yeah. you can animate them mm. and then, uh, structure your own levels and stuff. So you basically build it. How, how is it different than that other game? Cause I thought you could build your own levels and build your own characters in the, that other game. You can do that. That's more of just, that's a, a video game first. And then within the video game, you can kind of create. Do you stuff. know that they're going public? I was just reading an article on them. Yeah, are well, they? They're, really? they're huge. Dude. Wait, yeah. well, you mean the company that? that yeah. is? Oh wow. Yeah, Rob- it's Roblox or something. Roblox. Like yeah. yeah, something like that, right? So wow. I'm not familiar with it. I've never used, it, but I've seen a couple articles. Uh, that's my on- kids' favorite game. Yeah, wow. they're, they're all about that. Well, speaking of uh, the market and going public, you guys see Peloton just crushing. Yeah, just crushing. Well, I mean, we I, we kind of called that right because of the way that the fitness space is has moved due to due to covid mm-hmm. um and i think when everything went down i want to say peloton was like 40 something 40 something dollars mm-hmm. as of right now i think it's 120 something dollars yeah. uh you know and 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 it's looks like it's just going to keep going up with the amount of users and we got christmas coming up yeah i predict that to be a i mean that's an information tech stock right i don't think it's trading like a fitness company at all no no yeah no it's gonna do i'm really i'm you know what i'm surprised in is fitbit that was the other one that we talked about that i thought well we'd see a rise on that with everything that's going on with it and google and then with the christmas so i'm still banking on that one to do better when we when we get closer to Christmas because I thought for sure that Fitbit would have wasn't there yeah, something with some cool new wasn't products. there something with Fitbit and Europe and their information oh, they, they had to pass something that was with Google right yeah. okay yeah yeah so that was and then it all went through right so I think that everything went through with them and Google they they had stuff they were working with the NFL so they got all these great stuff and their stock is still so cheap it's like six six dollars six it's something. nothing yeah it's not expensive so I, I don't know I don't know what's holding them up from like exploding I would think they would be they're one of the leaders in like you know wearables oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, they've been the staple for for yeah that that aspect of the the industry. For yeah, them. I just there's an article right here. It says Google offers Europe more checks that Fitbit data won't be used for ads. Okay, so that's the fear. The fear is that they're going to use they're going to use your personal uh, health information and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Good luck, yeah. Europe. <laughs> trying to prevent Google from doing that. Yeah, right. that's what they do. Yeah. Yep. First question is from Lake Jossen. When is it more advantageous to use a supinated grip over a pronated grip for tricep exercises? It's obviously riskier when doing exercises like skull crushers, but does it hit the tries at a different angle? No, it doesn't. Mm. You know, I remember when I thought oh, that, yeah. that it did something. Because it feels different. It does. It, you, so I would do press downs and I would change mm. the handles, right? So I'd go press down with the straight bar, the rope, and then it'd have a supinated grip and I could be like, oh, I feel it in, in different areas. Yeah. And then you learn uh, anatomy and biomechanics and you realize that the triceps really has nothing to do with the wrists rotating. Does nothing has nothing to do with supinating or proning the hands unlike the biceps. But then people would say things and I would say something like back then, but I feel it differently. Yeah. Well, the reason why you feel it differently is supinating or proning your hands tends to change your elbow position a little bit. So if I supinate my hands, I'm more likely to squeeze my elbows in at my sides rather than allowing them to, out. to flare out a little bit. And trice, uh, elbow position 
makes a difference with triceps. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's what you you would basically want to pay attention to. Do you think it's that? Do you think it's the the elbow positioning that makes it feel different? I've you, actually never thought uh, of you're that. You're driving it in more yeah, when no, you supinate. Make, I mean, that I makes sense. Yeah, and so yeah. like you're squishing your triceps against if you're, the lat. Because if your palms are up and you're doing like a reverse grip push down like you're saying right now, you're right. Like I can... It, it actually feels awkward to let the elbows flare out. It mm-hmm. feels more comfortable to keep them more turned in. That's right? why so it feels be, different. Right. And when you do a tricep pushdown, one of the most common things when you're in an overhand grip or pronated, you see people flare their elbows. So maybe you're right. I'd never even thought of that. That's why it felt so different. I just thought because you're holding on to it and actually just the tense of you gripping it. Because right. you like when you're on top of it, like on a pushdown, you don't even have to grip the bar. Like mm-hmm. you could completely relax your palms and pu- push yeah, down. Yeah, I was thinking the tension might be another That's, factor, right? Yeah, because th- then you can squeeze a bit harder and more intensely sometimes when you're in a supinated grip, uh, just because now we're like squeezing versus just pushing is a different type of stimulus. But again, I think the the elbow position is definitely you know that's that's you know going to be the meat of it all. Well, that was one of the bet. We did a video. Maybe I'll have um, Rachel's been going through our old. Uh, library of uh, YouTube videos and she's been posting like things that we did a long time ago. We did a video that um, it was all about buys and tries and it was all about elbow position. Yeah. It was a long time ago that we did. So maybe she'll post that up on the uh, main IG. But t- that was the biggest, uh, you know, I'm trying to get better about saying game changer. We say it all the time. It just fits so it well. It changed the game. Yeah, yeah it, there just, you go. it just fits so well there, though. You know what I'm saying? Because it was a, you know, was a game changer for me when this when this came together. Like, I, too, would do, you know, on tricep day, I would go over to the cable machine because I felt it the most on cables more than anything else. And I would do a regular tricep push down, a supinated push down. I'd do the rope, and that would be like tricep day. Yep. Yeah. And nothing. I I got more gains on my buys and tries when I when I learned the the importance of manipulating my elbow positioning. And then I started to look at every workout and go, oh, okay. I'm going to do an exercise with my elbows by my side, my elbows out in front of me, then my elbows above my head. Yes. And then that, and then whether I did cables, dumbbells, all that stuff didn't matter as much as long as I manipulated the elbow positioning. Oh my God, my arms blew up after that. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's the, the things you want to focus on exactly what Adam said, right? Elbows by your sides, elbows in front of you, like a skull crusher, elbows overhead, like an overhead tricep. All three of those stretch and work the triceps a little differently, especially if you look at the attachments. But there is, there is a little bit of a difference in changing the the wrist position. Now it's not really it doesn't really have anything to do with the triceps. However, your recruitment patterns, you can get better at practicing a movement with different position. Now, I can't think off the top of my head what the value would be at getting good at a supinated grip press down. But let's just say you you were in some kind of weird sport that required you to grip something in a supinated grip and use your tricep. In that particular case, then it would make sense. So when it comes to sports or movement or patterns, then you're not necessarily looking at your body like a bodybuilder would, right? This is a bodybuilder question. Well, Does that's- it hit the triceps differently? But if you're talking about a movement, as, as a movement, if you're playing, if you're doing a sport and even though the hand position might not affect the targeted muscle, it may be a good idea to, to train with that hand position because that's the one you're using so much. That's, uh, Michael Hearn makes the case for this. Uh, he does a lot of like uh, weird, odd, like angled exercises mm-hmm. that are very similar, like as far as getting the getting the the di- uh, like gains on your tricep or your bicep. Like him doing this exercise versus this other one that he would show. It's like I'm looking at that and going like, oh, neither one of those are going to make that big of a difference. But the case that he makes is that it's, you know, I want to be strong in all positions. Right. So, and th- I can get behind that. Yep, you yep, know that what I'm saying? Sense. Yeah, like, I mean, in real life, you, you're you're rarely ever in the, the perfect skull crusher position, the perfect yeah. overhead, you know what I'm saying? So having your elbows flared, laying in a weird position with your out in a different it's way. It's the same I feel, too, with those, um, you know, those those added grip. Fat uh, grips. Fat grips, thank yeah. you. Yeah, it's just the same. It's, it's you know, just getting strong with a different grip is valuable. Valuable, but it's not like right, not the game like a- changer, the panty dropper, whatever you want to call it, right? <laughs> We're gonna change can we say that? Can I don't we do know pan- if I can say that. Can we do panty pan- dropper instead? I tell you what, when yeah. I changed elbow position, it was a panty dropper. <laughs> <laughs> right? It kind of works. I, hey, I'm with you. We're gonna that use doesn't that. work, I don't think. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Next question is from CMOS23. What would you tell a client who was told 
they only have to train with partial reps or a limited range of motion to save their joints. Oh, I remember when I figured this out. It was a panty dropper. For sure. <laughs> for sure it's going to stick. Yeah, it is, for real. It is going to stick. stick. I'm using it, dude. I'm All using right, it. that's fine. I I'm figured you I would adjust it. I'm uh, using yeah. this one. So here, no, here's the thing, okay? You want to train, and this is where people get confused uh, with ranges of motion. Do I train in a full range of motion? Do I train in a partial range of motion? It's very individual. You want to train in the fullest range of motion, and here's the important part, that you have control over, okay? So the fullest range of motion that you have control over. What does this look like for you? It can be very different in, in terms of what it looks like for you than what it would look like for someone else. So when I would train somebody who had poor mobility, uh, somebody who wasn't, you know, didn't have lots of stability and strength, sometimes that meant we would do squats, and the squats would be to start with a quarter squat. Um, because anything lower than a quarter squat, they didn't have the stability to support that range of motion and the risk of injury was too high or we would end up training uh, a movement pattern that wasn't good, right? Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't, it doesn't stop there though. Then I would try to improve the person's functional range of motion. So if all we can do are quarter squats because you lack the mobility and stability to do a full <laughs> squat, I will do quarter squats, but I'm not gonna stop there. I'm gonna do exercises and correctional movements to increase and improve your range of motion because the best way to live life, the best way to develop muscle and strength is to have long ranges of motion that you control, yeah. be able to own all ranges of motion. Now your risk of injury is really well, low. An example I think of uh, immediately with this, uh, which was uh, one of my clients that had like frozen shoulder. And so this was something that was just a real debilitating, uh, you know, had like no range of motion, could barely even lift his arm up to about chest height, right? And so that's what I had to work with. And so we had to go very gradually uh, into different ranges of motion and we could only do what we could, could do. And so a lot of it looked like actually isometrics where we'd find that in range and then we would connect to it yes. and then try and pull up on his own. So a lot of it was all his own effort with pulling away. So if I put, for instance, so if I put his hand on the wall and, and I try to get it up as high as I can where he's pushing on the wall at his highest uh, point of, of range of motion to now connect to that. So he's going to squeeze into it. But now he also has to try and pull off of the wall. Uh, that was a totally different uh, type of an exercise that had massive benefit that was a really gradual increase in range of motion over time, but it's totally different mindset. I think you guys are both missing the point here. This, this, uh, and neither one of you are slamming the shit out of the person who gave this advice. Like, you guys are both making cases for where you would use partial reps, right. and it makes sense. Instead of slamming core squats. It, yes. It, well, instead of slamming this person that is telling the- Save your joints. Yeah, yeah. To, to do partial reps to save your joints. Yeah, you're right. Like, you guys are making, like, which I, I understand the where you're going. Like, yeah, absolutely. Like, there's been cases where we, as trainers, used partial reps with a client for the exact reasons that both of you just, just defended. But if someone is telling a client- you should do partial reps to save your joints. That is some of the it's worst advice. advice. That's terrible advice mm -hmm. because what you're going to do is train them to train them to be strong and controlled in that shortened range of motion. And anything outside of that, their joints will be more vulnerable. Right. So that's the last thing that I'd want to do. Like now, that doesn't mean that you know we don't or we're not careful with going full range of motion. Like maybe like like to Sal's point, when this person squats, their form breaks down after a quarter squat, and so therefore you would take the, the precautions that Sal and Justin are talking about. But as far as just general advice, this is terrible advice that you should not, you know, limit your range of motion, especially if you already have it. Mm -hmm. If you have full range of motion in your shoulder and you think, oh, this is going, and someone's telling the, this person that them doing partial reps is going to save their joints and, and you're going to get more out of it long term. Yeah. No, that's terrible. You're not preparing them for real world uh, oh. activities and function uh, because nobody's living in those short ranges of motion constantly. I mean, there's so many more no. variables. To no, consider. it has to be appropriate, of course. Um, and the goal is always to increase the range of motion. So if you, if you are using partial reps, you have to also train yourself to be able to use Full of reps. The problem is this. The problem is, is that we often confuse the human body with uh, machinery that we use in everyday life, right? So if I use uh, a particular tool or machine, the more I use it, the more wear and tear there is on it. And and uh, the le it's not gonna, it has a certain shelf life, right? So over time, if I continue to use a door hinge over and over again, it wears down and that's bad for the door hinge. This is not how the human body works. 
The human body, yes, you get wear and tear, but that sends a signal for repair and strengthening. This is why muscles build. I wear and tear on them when I work out. They get they build and they get stronger. Not sending that signal act, actually causes more problems. Yeah, atrophy. So, so for joint health, the best possible thing you could do is move them through appropriate ranges of motion and build strength within them. That'll keep your health your joints healthy. Not moving your joints actually speeds up the degradation process. It actually speeds up or amplifies your risk of injury. So, and then you think, okay, well, what about people that overuse their limbs and, and hurt themselves? It's totally different. Mm-hmm. I'm not talking about overuse. I'm not talking about overcoming your body's ability to adapt and strengthen. And I'm not talking about strengthening a bad recruitment pattern. Well, that can definitely cause problems. But if you have good movement, I mean, the, 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 the people who are old with the best ranges of motion, the best joints, the best joint health are people who exercise, not people who sit around and don't move their bodies. So this is a, it's, there's just a false paradigm here that, mm. oh, you got to save your joint. Don't use it that much. Yeah. Much It doesn't work that way. The body either decides to strengthen and maintain a joint or it decides it doesn't need the joint anymore. Not moving it tells the body we don't need it right, anymore. It's going to naturally prune that. That's it. Next question is from Kenny Phalanges, 28. I have a big appetite and I always feel hungry. What are some strategies you've used to help? Are there any specific foods that you have used to hack big appetites? Mm. Yeah, so um, so this is a problem for a lot of people, right, is, is overeating. Um, and so I'll talk about what worked well for my clients because this was never an issue for me. I was uh, I had a fast metabolism. I always wanted to gain weight. So the opposite was the issue for me was figuring out how to eat more food. But for... I'd say probably 90-something percent of my clients, it was the opposite, right? They were dealing with <clears throat> with overeating. Mm-hmm. And there's a couple things you could do. One, for people who overeat, uh, more often than not, eating more frequently tends to help, okay? It, it does tend to help. So having someone have three meals with snacks in between, so long as things are tracked properly, otherwise it gets out of uh, control, that seems to help. Um, high protein makes a big difference. Protein is very, very satiating. So what I used to tell my clients who had issues with this is I would say, okay, when you're eating your meal, which typically would have uh, protein, some kind of a fat, and some type of carbohydrate, eat the protein first. Mm-hmm. Eat your 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 you know six ounce serving of, of meat first and then move on to the other uh, categories of macronutrients. And usually the second one I would be fat uh, because that's more satiating the carbohydrates and then move on to carbohydrates. That tends to help the most. A high protein diet actually does quite a bit, or has done quite a bit for clients who've dealt with ap- with appetite issues. Steak and sweet potato. Hmm. Uh, this has wow, been a- that's very specific. Yeah, yeah, no, really, <laughs> and that's why I want to give you that something that, that I've literally had this question asked to me many, many times with clients, and uh, down to where we've played with all kinds of different foods, and you know, obviously there's an individual variance, and some people have used other things, but this worked really well. And it's for the point that you just made right now, like a, a high protein meal and, and fat. So fat and protein are going to satiate you more than anything else. Steak is great for this. You know, eat a nice big steak first and then sweet potato because it's not as high a calorie and you can get away with eating a pretty good sized sweet potato without a ton of calories. And it's pretty filling mm-hmm. uh, and it's lower on the glycemic index than other carbohydrates. Um, this tended to be like a, like a solid meal that I could, and then I would tell them to get a vegetable on top of that. So if you were to eat a, a, a salad with that, or a bunch of greens, whether it be green beans or <clears throat> something like that, that you could fill up on, that was like a really filling good, solid meal that, uh, always helped clients that were struggling with this. So this yeah. was a regular, a regular, uh, thing that I recommend. I see two things that might be a little different than you guys. One uh, being water uh, being consumed, oh, yeah. uh, which is mm. something I would I would direct them immediately to just uh, to see. A lot of times it was not the case where they were drinking a good amount of water uh, and they were constantly hungry and and always consuming things to Great kind point. of fill this uh, you know craving for something. And um, so that was one thing. The other thing was to just understanding hunger a little bit more specifically. And so I, this is where I do f- find value uh, in experimenting with, even if it's like a meal skip or it's like a, a full day fast or something where they can actually like live in those signals for a while and realize they're going to mm-hmm. be okay on the other side. I'm not saying this is a constant practice they do, but I think it's an educational one uh, to really understand the difference between a craving and an actual desire to eat and have hunger. I, oh, love, your, I love your water 
that I forgot that's so this is something I would also recommend to this exact same client is before you eat meals, like to make them like pound a glass of water before you go to yeah, eat a exactly. meal. Because a lot of times it is, it's a lack of hydration that makes you think that you're really hungry. So filling up with a glass of water before you sit down and eat the meal would always help that out too. Yeah, great, and, great tip. Yeah, those those are both um, excellent tips. I think the other one too, a lot of pe- a lot of, and I used to notice this when my clients it took me a long time to figure this out. But a lot of the excess calories would come from eating when they were doing something else. So watching TV mm. or while they're working. Distracted, yeah. Yeah, because it's distracted eating. You're not very aware. So I would tell them like a simple rule. And people respond pretty well to black and white simple rules. So I'd say, okay, anytime you eat, don't do anything else. If you're doing something else, don't eat. That used to result in, in, a, in a 100 to 300 calorie reduction uh, for a lot of my clients. Pretty consistently yeah, you know, down the road. Next question is from Trey Thayer. There's a lot of skepticism about chiropractic therapy and its origins. What are your opinions and do you think it helps? It's a lot like any other profession, I feel like, right? There's mm. there's examples of really bad ones and then there's examples of like really good ones. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's like trainers. There's phenomenal trainers out there that are brilliant and doing great work and then there's a lot of shit butts um i think that's, that's true in in the in <laughs> that's this one of my favorite terms that's it's it's this it's true in this 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 field also there's uh and i used to by the way i i, I hated chiropractors so for and that's again that was my experience right the first 10 that i experienced as a trainer were all really shitty like i'd say like nine out of ten of them were really shitty one of them was like okay and so I had like a bad taste in my mouth for chiropractors. I used to, in my presentation, when I was selling personal training to people, I used to love to get somebody who saw a chiropractor because I would shit on them completely. And so I had that attitude for a really long time. It wasn't until Dr. Brink and Jordan Shallow did that completely become a panty dropper for me. So it Damn. was, it was, yeah. It's sticking, <laughs> Doug. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do it. Making it work. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to make it work. Well, I so. feel responsible for this. It was, no, it was a game changer. If they were, both of them were. Yeah. Uh, they, uh, the, they're two of the uh, most brilliant men that I've met in this field and uh, have both have blown my mind uh, completely. And so I, it, and because of that experience from them, it's opened my eyes to And there's guys like the Move You guys. I love those guys. They're chiropractors. Mm-hmm. You, you know um, where, the, the, where the, the skepticism comes from? It, it's, it comes from the, so, and this is, this is a problem in a lot of fields. What some chiropractic methods uh, were teaching was that, okay, the central nervous system controls everything in your body. That's correct. The spine uh, houses, obviously, the spinal cord. And through the spinal cord, your central nervous system communicates to the whole body. Central nervous system communicates your breathing and your – it could affect the hormones and it could affect how you think and it can affect the immune system. All of this is true. But then they took this massive leap mm-hmm. and said that lining up your bo- body and your spine – then can cure all the problems since right. everything comes like diseases and, yeah, and, yeah, and colds yeah, and everything else. Yeah, since everything comes from the central nervous system and the central nervous system affects everything, mm-hmm. therefore aligning. Yeah, they your made a massive jump. Massive jump, and then of course there's a lot. That's that's just not uh, true. Well, that's how you know. Okay, so a good way to tell if you have got a shitty chiropractor or a good one, and this was like my experience with uh, Brink was, you know, many chiropractors will they'll do an assessment on you. And whether it be they have like the, the new digital ones that take like a photo of you and then they tell you, oh, you have your shoulder elevated here, you're rounded here. And then they throw you on the table and they just crack you into place. Like then you have a shitty yeah, chiropractor. Crack them and crack them. That, that's all they do. Because all that, all, if they do that, sure, they may give you temporary relief, but they're not fixing you. You're going to have to come back forever and they're setting you up to where. They're not fixing why your body was it, being exactly. held that way. And a good chiropractor may not even use his table to adjust you ever and is going to make you walk and move and squat and get down on the floor and explain to you what's what's broken or what's going wrong with your body, what movements, what exercises that you need to do to fix the root cause that's causing whatever issues, whether it be chronic pain or bad movement patterns. And that is like what a good, a good chiropractor will do versus 
you know, take a picture of you, break you down, tell you how dysfunctional you are, lay you down, crack you and go, see how good you feel? Come mm -hmm. back, see me next week on Tuesday. I'll make sure you feel good again. And then you get stuck in this cycle of, I got to see a chiropractor. You keep patching holes. Yeah. You're not, yeah. you're not addressing the root cause. All you do is putting a band. No, a good it. chiropractor is a movement specialist. Yeah. Uh, that not an adjustment specialist. Now there is a place for adjustments. Uh, and you know, I've heard it explained a lot of different crazy ways, but the best chiropractors I've worked with explained it very, very well. And really it's about articulating joints in the body that may be quote unquote stuck because the muscles around them are so tight. So it's like you have a tight muscle anywhere on your body. If you stretch it or move it, it starts, it relaxes and allows it to, and it starts to feel better. Well, there are small joints in the body, in the spine, where the rib cage attaches, in the hips, where something might be so difficult and stuck that traditional stretches just don't articulate it. And so it requires somebody to come and manually yeah. cause yeah, they need do to an intervene, adjustment. Right? Yes. Yeah. But, I mean, I think that's really the uh, where I see value in it is when you've already gone through the work of, you know, muscular wise, training wise, uh, you're trying to get uh, into better alignment and it's just not there yet. And maybe now you might look into subluxation or whatever technique they're going to use to try and help to get you back. Cause you do feel a lot better once you're in good alignment and your joints are functioning mm -hmm. uh, the way that they're supposed well, to. Well, I, I think, I feel like it's a similar thing to how we talk about you know, foam rolling or, the, or the, the therapy guns, like all these things give you temporary relief. So if you use those tools to then go do the movements that you need to do to yes. address the issue, then it's a good thing. So if you go and you see a chiropractor, he adjusts you, realigns you to make you feel better. So then you go do the exercises that you need to do to correct the problem. Mm -hmm. Then I, I see value in it. But one of the things that I would see with the, a lot of the chiropractors I worked with as a trainer early, well before Brink and Shallow, is they didn't give any corrective exercises. They had just adjusted. Mm -hmm. That's all they did was it just adjusted to fix the person and made them feel better for the day or for a few days before they'd come back. They weren't they weren't explaining to them what was going on with their body. I was having to do that as a trainer and saying, listen, but all you, the, all they're doing is cracking you back into place. You feel good, but then your muscles are pulling you back into the, the bad position. You see the same thing from, you know, Western medicine, like with, uh, you know, doctors, they're, they're prescribing you pills to make you feel better, but there's no real protocol yeah. of, you know, maybe we should like, you know, change up our diet. Maybe we should get this type of exercise. Maybe like, there's no plan. It's just like, I can make you feel better right now. Yeah, and so they followed a similar business model, I feel. Yeah. So it's like, oh, you have uh, acid reflux. Here's a pill that will per that make you feel better, but never talking about the root cause right. of acid reflux. Oh, you get headaches all the time. Here's this pill to help you with your headaches, but we'll never figure out you know, the root cause. There's also a lot of business models that uh, surround the chiropractic industry that are designed to maximize a chiropractor's revenue. And I think this also has, for lack of a better term, poisoned the industry, right? So you'll see chiropractors who utilize these models, don't remember the names of these models, but they'll say, okay, here's a great way to make a lot of money as a chiropractor. You have you know, 10 people show up at the same time and they're all on different beds and you go and adjust this one over here, adjust this one over here. It's like a factory. Yes. Yeah. And it's, these are these business assembly line. Be, no joke uh, in the health space, the chiropractic industry probably has more of these get rich quick in your chiropractic business type schemes than almost any that I can think of. Well, because and they, this causes problems. Well, because they can give immediate relief and feel better. Yeah. It's it's one of those tangible things, right? Like you walk in, someone has got low back pain because they're all out of alignment, right? And you have someone crack them into place and it's like, oh my God, that feels so much better. It's like, all I had to do was do that in five minutes. They set them in these 15 minute increments. Yep. So you've got clients coming in and out. Like you can't, I mean, you, you know what it's like to train somebody and help them with an issue. Like it don't take no 15 minutes. No. Mm -hmm. It takes me 15 minutes just explain what's going on with them and then it takes me another 15 to 20 minutes to do, to do the exercises to fix the it issue. It would be the equivalent of a trainer having six clients and like, hey, you're doing a bench press, you're doing a row, totally. you're doing it and then you show them and you walk away and oh, I get to yeah, train you five You show people. them but there's no instruction after Exactly. That. No, a good chiropractor, I'm going to say this again, is a movement specialist. If you find a chiropractor that understands correctional exercise and teaches you how to prevent yourself from hurting in the first place, you found a good one. If you have a chiropractor that just provides relief, and then schedule you for your next appointment, uh, then you have one that uh, doesn't have tons of value. Look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. So if you want to watch the podcast, come to YouTube, Mind Pump uh, Podcast. Um, also, we have a, a YouTube channel with exercise demos. 
That's called Mind Pump TV. And then finally, you can find all of us on Instagram, including Doug, the world's best podcast producer. Yeah. You can find Doug at Mind Pump Doug. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. Well, I had some mixed feelings this, uh, this weekend. Oh, yeah. well, it, it, is this going to turn into a therapy session? No, no, oh. it's kind of interesting. So, uh, well, the countdown begins for you guys. It you're, does. So you're, oh, you're yeah. like in the final Jeez. final week here. It's the final countdown. I thought it was going to be this weekend. I'm going to be honest with well, you. Well, so, so she's at, Jessica's at the point now where she's ready.